Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and on today's video, we're taking a look at the new and improved Game Max Mesh Box. This is a box which has got a lot of mesh. Keep watching to find out more. So, first of all, before we get into this, a big shout out to Dave Aiken. Thank you very much for letting me borrow this, do a quick unboxing on. Now, for those of you that are not sure what this case is all about, if you like this case or the kind of dimensions, etc., there is actually another version of this, which is the Game Max Spark, which is essentially the same chassis, but rather than having mesh sides, it's got glass panels on either side. So potentially you might prefer that, or you may prefer this slightly more subdued look. So this has, as you can see, a mesh panel all the way across here for ventilation, and it's got pretty much mesh outlets all around. So the two panels are basically identical, and also you've got a mesh top as well. So this is what they call like a, a chimney effect. So what they're expecting you to do is to have fans mounted in the top for exhaust, and then either using negative pressure pulling in from the sides through the ventilation, or potentially putting fans on the very bottom to obviously force air in and straight through. So in a vertical orientation, which generally works well. Convection, the way heat works, it rises. So cold air in, hot air out, at least that is the theory. So anyway, with that brief introduction out of the way, let's get on and take this thing apart, see what it's all about, and I'll give you some hints and tips and some things to look out for if you're potentially planning to do a build on this. I should say, first of all as well, this price at the moment here in the UK at the end of July 2023, looking around about £65, which is kind of, I think personally, a little bit on the upper side of things. I'd love to see this come down to like $49.99. I think that is the perfect price for this type of case. But having said that, it's very strong. It's very well constructed, solid, dependable, lots of room, and will fit an ATX motherboard in a relatively compact form factor. And talking of the form factor, let's show you on the box some of the specifications. So I'll quickly go through those. Done some close-ups a little bit earlier so you can see the specs. But don't worry, we'll go through most of it in a bit more detail as we go through the teardown. So let's start off with the front panel. So as you can see, this is a completely solid front panel in metal. It is an absolute fingerprint magnet. Let's see if we can demonstrate that to some effect. I've just washed my hands, so they're not that greasy, but they are still leaving marks. So it is gonna be a little bit of a fingerprint magnet. Now this does actually come in two flavors. So there is this one, which is like the satin matte black. There is also a white version as well. So if you want the glossy white version, obviously that is an option and effectively the prices are pretty much the same. So solid front panel, metal, nice and solid, we like that. You've got a power button, which also has an LED built into it, so you know if the PC is on. You've also got a combo headset mic jack there. Underneath that, USB Type-C, which isn't quite USB Type-C. Now it is in all intents and purposes, you can plug a USB Type-C connection into there, but it actually converts on the inside of the case to a standard USB 3.0 the 30 pin header, but you'll see that a little bit later. And underneath that, we've got our type A 3.0 port as well. So effectively, both of those are connected to the same port on your motherboard, so don't worry. If you haven't got a motherboard with a USB type C front panel connector, it isn't a problem. So in some ways, it's actually a better thing, but in some respects, it's obviously gonna be limiting the throughput on that port because you're gonna be limited to what was available on the type A ports. Moving around to the side, as we said, so we've got a full mesh all the way across here which is gonna be great. So if you don't like looking inside your PC, because maybe you're not the best at cable management, but you still wanna see the soft glow of your beautiful RGB lighting, then it will give a very nice diffused effect without being clearly visible. I kinda of like it, I gotta be honest with you. Given the choice of this or the Spark with the glass panel, I actually prefer this, especially because we have that kind of closed off channel here, because the power supply is mounted in this section. And I find that a little bit weird having a metal panel there and then having glass across it all I'd have rather have seen just a smaller glass panel but this basically combats that very nicely and I think it does a very good job and of course a mesh panel is going to breathe significantly better than a sheet of glass. Moving around to the back so this is where things get a little bit different because obviously the power supply is mounted towards the front of the chassis you have to have some means of passing the power through to the power supply so there is a power supply connection here in the top you've got two thumb screws there to remove the top section You've got space here for a 120 mil fan, nice hexagonal type mesh there, or it is actually square, but the effect is very similar. And also you've got fully removable and replaceable PCI Express blanking plates, 
No thumb screws on those, just regular screws. And also there is a kind of cover on the side as well, which is also on a regular screw. Moving around to the back side, the back side is the same as the front side or the viewing side. So this is gonna be actually quite beneficial if you've got a motherboard and processor, which is generating quite a lot of heat around the VRM area and you want to get a little more ventilation in. The back there is essentially open, so you can gain access to the back of your CPU. And because you've got mesh there, it's gonna allow some of that heat to naturally dissipate. Or potentially, if you're in a negative airflow situation with air being pumped out the top, then it's gonna be pulling in cooler air from the sides and keeping the backside of the motherboard and the VRMs cool. So looking at the bottom of the case, this is an area I feel they could have done slightly better, but it still works and it's absolutely fine. So you've got this full length dust filter, which is one of those flexible, removable jobs. I'm not a big fan of these. I would have loved to have seen one of those slide out more nylon mesh type ones, but does the job okay. There's little magnets on there to keep it all nice and in place. And you can see here we've got ventilation. So in the bottom, they're suggesting from the owner's manual and from my experience with it previously, three 120 mil fans or two 140 mil fans being the maximum. Obviously, if you want to, you don't have to put any fans in here at all, or you can just put a single 120. The choice is yours but the most you can put in here is three 120s or two 140s. You're probably seeing some B-roll of me uh, trying the 140s in there a little bit earlier on today, and yet they don't appear to have any issues whatsoever. The only thing you will find if you're mounting a 120 towards this front section, where there is an optional area to mount a hard drive or SSD, because you've got the additional metal there, you are gonna be reducing the airflow to this front fan quite significantly. And next we can take a look at the top. So the top is actually pretty cool. I like this, it's plastic top with a nylon mesh underneath. Two thumb screws on the back, so you can just take those out. They're not captive, so do be careful in case you drop them on the floor and lose them like I did a little bit earlier. This just pulls backwards. Not the easiest of things to do whilst you're actually trying to hold it. So there you can see there is the plastic panel and the nylon mesh works very well. Again, I've done a build in this previously with the Spark and the airflow actually on this is really good. Surprisingly, you wouldn't think it would be in this kind of configuration, but the chimney effect does work actually particularly well. And with that out of the way, you can see the access point. So in the top here, again, you've got options for either two 120 mil fans, or you can put in two 140s. When it comes to radiators, 240 is the most you can put in here, either top or bottom. You can't fit a 280 in the bottom, and you can't fit a 280 in the top, so you're gonna be limited to 240 mil AIO style radiators. Of course, if you're just going for a traditional air cooling setup, two 140s in the top, two 140s in the bottom, and you'll have more than enough airflow. Moving on to the power supply section. So I've actually put a power supply in here. For anyone who's uh, concerned or confused, the power supply is not included with this. I've purely put it in here for demonstration purposes so you can see how it fits, etc and to give you an idea when we open it up inside to see the clearance for graphics cards, etc. So the power supply is not included, although if you do want a power supply, this one is the Game Max 550 watt gold rated RGB one. If you want to pick one of those up, I will put links in the video description along with links for the case itself. So if you want to replicate what we've got here, you certainly can do. Anyway, so the power supply, as I said, ATX full size power supply. You can, if you want to, put an SFX one in there with the adapter mount, there's no reason why not. Power supplies fit in either way. So if you've got your power connection around the other way, so this at the moment is with the fan actually facing towards the inside. If you want to, you can mount it the other way with the fan facing towards the front panel, although you are gonna be restricting the air coming into your power supply a little bit there. So potentially not the best of ideas, but either way works absolutely fine. Something to be also a little bit mindful of is your power supply. So depending how your connection is on the power supply here, you see if that is facing the opposite way round, then yeah, you may struggle to actually physically get it to fit. It is possible, but it does require a little bit more dexterity. So yeah, do uh, bear that in mind when buying a power supply for this particular chassis. But once it's all in there, pretty easy to do. The wire is all going through the top there. So yeah, no problems at all. So removing the side panels is uh, not as easy as it could be. I would have liked to have seen them just on a latch so you can just pull them up, but there is actually two screws, which I've already removed. So one on each side, and then you just pull the actual panel upward and it is on a kind of slot rack. And as you can see there, it's actually quite nice, the mesh as well. And it's actually been made pretty well. It's uh, actually quite solid. They've used pretty decent gauge steel, I'm guessing on here. Uh, I don't think it's aluminium, it does appear to be steel. But yeah, done nicely. And actually I must say the paint job as well they've done on both sides is, uh, I would argue, perfect. Although not the perfect color for me, I would have preferred this to be in gloss black or a slightly more matte finish to uh, hide up some of those fingerprints, which no doubt, you can possibly already see a little bit. So yeah, like I said, this is gonna be a fingerprint magnet. 
So looking inside, as you can see, plenty of room in there. Even with this uh, protective section on here, this section actually covers a few bases. So you can use it for various things. One, if you've got a particularly ugly power supply, you don't want to see it, obviously you can leave that there. You can actually mount SSDs to this as well. So SSDs or two and a half inch drives, hard drives will fit on there. So you can put one there, one there. You have got these cable management sections, although depending on your power supply at the top, if you've got an SFX power supply, you will be able to still put cables through there. In this situation with the ATX1, basically it's impossible, but you can still kind of run cables up the side or somehow wherever you want to. But yeah, the bottom one would be absolutely no problems at all. Uh, to remove this section, three screws. So I'll quickly go ahead and do that now. So there we have it. There is the, uh, the open chassis. Again, power supply is not included. I cannot stress that enough. You aren't gonna get a gold rated PSU with a case for 65 pounds. It's, it's just not gonna happen. I just wanted to put it in there because this actually, because this power supply has a 140 mil fan in here for cooling, it has got a little bit more depth than some others on the market. And actually, if we take a measurement of that, it is about 170 mil. So most power supplies are about 150, 160. Some of the more um, compact ones can be 140, but this is quite a large one. So I wanted to put this in here to give you an idea of scale. So I'm not sure if I said already, this supports ATX, micro ATX and ITX motherboards. And obviously, again, because you don't have a glass panel on there, so it's all completely visible, you can put whatever you want in here. It's actually a good idea because it's kind of micro ATX form factor, but takes ATX boards. So if you do want to pay the extra for an ATX board to give you the extra features, your M.2s, your extra PCI Expresses, etc., you can do. Or if you want to save a little bit of money on your motherboard and go for a micro ATX one, you can obviously put it in there and kind of no one's really going to know about it because it's going to be obscured by that mesh side panel. When it comes to cable management, it's not gonna be as easy as it would be with a traditional kind of um, dual sided case. It is actually quite congested in the back there, especially around the CPU area. You can get some wires down through there, but it's not particularly deep in that section. We'll see that shortly. Uh, when it comes to the actual front panel IO again, like I said, you've got that single USB 3.0 connection with two cables on. So one is for the type A, one is for the type C. So you are gonna be limited to, I think it's five gigabit per second maximum on that connection. And you've got your HD audio connection. And for the front IO, you've got your power switch, power LED, and also your hard drive LED as well. Also, so moving that out of the way, you can see a little bit better in there. Plenty of room in there to work with, especially again, because you don't have to be too pedantic about your cable management, because a lot of it is gonna be obscured anyway. Uh, power supply wise, like I said, it comes down quite low. Even if you've got a graphics card in here, which is quite long. We've tried this actually on our live stream we did uh, last Saturday, but probably a lot longer, depending on when this video is released. Uh, tried some various configurations in here. If you're going with a dual fan card, most dual fan cards, it's gonna come up to kind of like here maybe. So about 270 mil. They do say on the website up to 370 millimeters is the maximum GPU length. Realistically, I think that's way too, way too much because um, you'll probably see some b-roll actually i put this the the, uh, the rule against here so you're looking at 370 is kind of almost into this front panel so that is going to be a little bit much although potentially you can do it even with this larger power supply depending on your wiring etc this is modular so the, i've taken the wires out if you've got wires coming in you are going to be realistically i think limited to around about 290 300 mil for an easier job of wiring Luckily, a lot of the modern cards now are getting to be a little bit more efficient, so they need less fans. But yeah, obviously, depending on what your plans are with this, do make your graphics card choices appropriately. Otherwise, you may come a little bit unstuck. Again, if you've got a smaller power supply, then you can use the full width in there if you want to. Anyway, I'm with turn on. Also in here, there is mounting section. You can't see it at the moment because the uh, power supply is in the way. There's a section on the back for an SSD, which we'll see shortly when we take that off. You've got cutouts in the top. So if your EPS connector or for fan connections, that sort of stuff along the top, you don't really need it there because most of it, I guess you can just run along the top anyway, because again, none of it is gonna be visible. The removable PCI Express blanking plates on the back, as we said, 120 mil mounting for fans. And I guess that is kind of it really. There's not a great deal else I can think I can show you in there. So that is the uh, internal layout. Let's take a look in the back. So taking a look at the uh, the back side now, so you can see there is a cable management route across the top here. This section here is actually quite deep for stashing cables, uh, around about 30 mil. And you've got the hard, well, SSD section here, or hard drive, I suppose you could. You might struggle to get a, uh, 
a larger drive in there, but Velcro, etc. you could do. And this is actually on quite a nice little system. So included in the accessories, there are these rubber mounts and screws. So you just attach that to the back of a drive. Obviously drive isn't included. That is my own. I've just put this in here for demonstration purposes, but it's pretty good. So you put it in, push it down. It's all on rubber. So if it is a mechanical drive, it's going to absorb vibrations, etc. So you can put that in there. Cable management channel down there, pass throughs there, etc. I guess that is pretty much it. I would say the one of the concerns is down the bottom here. So if you're going to planning on running your cables in through the back there for your uh, front panel IO, etc., it is going to get a little bit tight there. And also running your uh, EPS cable. So if you're coming from the power supply here, coming from the bottom, you probably want to run up and along. So make sure that your power supply has a, uh, a quite a long EPS connection to get to your motherboard or potentially you might want to look at an extension for that potentially. So yeah, I think that is pretty much it for the back. It's not really a great deal to talk about there. Uh, in terms of CPU height clearance, so they're saying up to 168 millimeters, which is going to be pretty much fine. That incorporates kind of most coolers up to, I would say you would struggle with the Noctua uh, D15. That comes in about 168, 169. So yeah, you might find it touching the end and especially if you have to mount the fans out a little bit for RAM clearance, etc. Realistically, any of the 120 mil or even 140 mil tower coolers on the market are going to be absolutely fine in there. And of course, if you're going for water cooling, then it isn't going to be a concern anyway. Last of all, I think we'll talk about the accessories bag. And actually, it's, uh, it's quite nice, actually, because you've got some Velcro in there. So for cable management, there's some cable ties as well. You've also got a whole bunch of screws and fixtures. And if you lose any of the rubbers for mounting the hard drive, which we showed you in there, uh, there's spares for that as well. There's also a uh, little bit that goes on your screwdriver for doing the motherboard mounting pillars. The motherboard mounting pillars is something I would pay close attention to because when I first opened this, it was in a kind of hybrid mode. So it was kind of almost ATX, but almost micro ATX. And there's a few of the standoffs which are potentially in the wrong place. So yeah, do make sure you check those before you do your final mounting, depending on what setup you're doing. It's clearly laid out and there is a manual in there as well, but I'll tell you exactly how to do it. So yep, all good. So I think that is gonna be pretty much it. I actually really like this case. It does have a few challenges, which do make you consider your build a little bit more. Like I said, some of the cable management stuff, if you are very kind of finicky or pedantic about your cable management, it has to be absolutely perfect. It will throw up a few challenges on the back because of the actual depth. There isn't a lot of depth to work with there, unfortunately. Of course, the power supply potentially, making sure that the power plug goes in the right way round, Otherwise, it's going to make it a little bit fiddly. Like I said, power supply wise, you can mount it with the fan here. So this is going to be pulling air out of the system and out through the top, exhausting with the rest. So if you've got the updraft, it's going to take in cooler air from the bottom, which also could be warmed up by your GPU. So there's other things to concern there. Uh, you can turn it around the other way if you want to. There is a little bit of a channel behind there, so it will get some airflow in there, just not as much as it would do there. And some of you are probably going to be asking this front session, does it come off for maintenance purposes or anything? Um, sadly, it doesn't appear so. It looks like it's actually riveted in. So yeah, getting behind there is going to be a matter of removing the power supply, etc. If you want to put anything in there, like maybe Velcro or kind of uh, sticks and drives in there if you need more drive storage. Although to be honest, I think it does pretty well in terms of drive storage. So you can put one SSD on the back here. You can put the two on the panel, which I've already removed, which uh, yeah, conveniently. And also you can mount a drive down the bottom here on these rubber mountings. So up to four drives in there. These days, I think a lot of us tend to be heading more towards the M.2 or NVMe storage. So maybe not so much of a concern as it would have been. If you're looking at putting a bunch of three and a half inch drives in here, realistically, it's probably not the case for you to be completely honest. But overall, I think, yeah, not too bad. 65 pounds, I think it's money well spent. It's a very uh, decent construction, very strong, sturdy, etc. And if it uh, fits in with what you want to do, nice clean design ethic and uh, relatively compact for an ATX, I think it's a, a pretty good shout. I would personally like to see it come down to about 50 pounds due to the fact that it just hasn't got the tempered glass. I think glass always does add a little bit of a premium to uh, case prices. But let me know what you think about this one in the comments section below. And I should say as well, also, thank you, Dave, for uh, lending me this case to have a, a brief look at. It's always nice to see a case again for the second time, even though we've seen the Spark previously, the glass, just seeing what they've done with it. I think personally for myself, between the two, I prefer this one over the Spark. But let me know what you think about it in the comments section. So I think that's going to wrap things up. I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.